of the all of the things that we see yeah. around us. Yeah. All the yeah, all the visions yeah. and all the meditations. Yes, yes. So vision meditation helps you to move forward. Yes. Okay. When you think about the the freedom of driving, because it's a different experience when you're driving in a car and you have a closed in you have a closed roofed car mm -hmm. versus a convertible. What vision um, helps you to, what does vision help you to feel? Safe. It helps you to feel safe. It helps you to feel safe. So when you're ready to go to another level, when you're ready to be able um, to, to move forward and you want to feel something different that you don't feel at the moment, that vision helps you feel safe. That vision helps you step into the imagination of the thing that you want to experience. Talk about freedom and vision. What what is that what does that look like to you? Freedom and vision, it feels like you belong to be there. Yes. Like you were made to be free. Yes, yes. Audience, you were made to be free. You were made to be unrestricted. You were made to be loosed. You were made to feel um, the liberality of your purpose and of your destiny. Anything that's holding you back, anything that's holding you down, anything that makes you feel in bondage, anything that makes you feel uh, suffocated, that's not the purpose of God concerning you. When we, when we are on, um, on a journey, and we are on a journey because we've experienced um, a lot of life events, yes, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of families have. Um, we're sitting here because you helped me. You understand that? Mm -hmm. We help each other. We help each other. And and as a mother, I want you to know that it's been very um, instrumental in my growth mm -hmm. and in my development and in my understanding of how to engage with you. Mm -hmm. You know? You're not little Justin. Yeah. You know? And um, that's going to make me cry because... I remember when people would call you like little Justin, little Justin, and now you're your own, you're Justin, you're Justin Smith, you know? Yeah. And what's something, what's one of the main things that I ask you? Do you know what? Who, who, do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? And I'll ask you to say your name. Do, do I ask you that? Yes, you do. <laughs> I'll ask you to say your name because I want you to know that your name means something. You know, and mm -hmm. I want you to know that you're somebody, right? Yes. And sometimes you have to remind your children and you have to remind yourself, listen, I, I am somebody. I know my name. My name has purpose. My name was given to me as the result of um, a, a conduit of um, blessings to come into the earth, mm -hmm. right? And so it's important for you to remember that. When you say who you are, what does that, what does that mean to you? As a person, mm -hmm. your emotions, yes. your physical, your mental health. Yes, yes. Everything that defines you. So it's identity. Yes. Okay. So with, with reminding yourself of who you are, it helps you to identify yourself. Yes. All right. And it also helps you to re-identify yourself if sometimes you get lost. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel like sometimes you get lost in, in really understanding who you are sometimes? Yes, all the time. Yeah. And when I feel like I don't know who to go to for help mm -hmm. and I got to figure it all out by myself, yeah. I need to know who I am. Yeah, yeah. How does God help you with that? He helps me by realizing what I need to do. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's really, that's really good mm -hmm. in my opinion because I need that yes. to help me know what needs yes. to be done. Yes, and when you have, you very gifted, you you have a lot of visions from God and you have a lot of dreams and they come true. Mm -hmm. And there's there's a prophet anointing on you also because you see things before they happen, or God will reveal something to you before it happens and so you're growing in the gift that God has given you mm -hmm. and it's important that you understand um, the voice of God because mommy may say one thing 
And I'm thinking as a mommy in the parental role, but God is seeing you as a leader. Mm -hmm. He's seeing you as um, a voice. He's seeing you as someone who's making a difference. And even as, as God talked to uh, the young prophets in the Bible, Jeremiah, mm -hmm. he says, don't say that you're a child. He says, go where I tell you to go and do what I tell you to do, basically. Do you feel the pressure of being a leader in your generation? All the time. Okay. It's just the perks of being a leader. Yeah. Sometimes you feel like you're going to fall, but you got to keep on going up and you'll make it. Yes, yes. You keep going up and you'll make it. Everyone is called to do something. Everyone is called for for uh, destiny. Everybody is called to go to a destination. And as Justin said, you keep one step going mm -hmm. and then it's another step going and then it's another step. And before you know it, you're escalating up, right? Mm -hmm. How how do your friends um, understand you? They understand me about my personality and mm -hmm. how I look, mm -hmm. dress, mm -hmm. act. Yes. And mostly they like ask me, hey, Justin, what are you going to do with that? Hey, Justin, what are we going to do together? Yeah. And I always try to like be cool with it. Yeah. And I dress, you know, I dress nice yes. for school. Yeah. And they just love that about me. Yes. And teachers do too. That's wonderful. You're very different, you know, and I think that people admire you when you're different mm -hmm. because you're not trying to fit in with the crowd and you're not trying to go the way that the crowd is going. You've made your own mark and you've made your own distinction of who you are. And a leader has to be able to guide people in one direction. And so when you show that it's pretty cool to be yourself mm -hmm. and to dress your own way and to talk to people who other people won't talk to, mm -hmm. you show that love also and you show that leadership skill that um, you can put yourself aside to be there for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Talk about a little, a little, um, a couple of situations that we've experienced, whereas you've made um, a lot of bullies your friends. So I do not, I'm not a big person of violence. Yeah. So whenever somebody's like jealous of me on how I look or how I dress yeah. or how I, you know, how I'm mm -hmm. a leader. Yes. People see that as a bad thing because yeah. they want to be that too. Absolutely. So what I do is I talk to them yes. instead of argue with them. Yeah. And we try to connect. Yes. Yes. Connection is extremely important. Mm hmm how do you get someone to connect with you if they are thinking one way and you're thinking another way? We we talk about our differences. Wonderful. And we try to see if we have a similarity. Good. And basically we do because we've been through a lot and yes. we know a lot of situations. Yes. And they do too. Of course. Of so, course. Mm -hmm. so we compare it mm -hmm. and I say, I know what you're going through mm -hmm. and they, I help them mm -hmm. they help me. Yeah. And that's the thing with leaders. They need help too. Yes. Do you feel that it is hard to ask for help as a leader? Because I notice you like to figure things yeah. out. Yeah. And you, he gets really quiet, and I appreciate that. And I'll say, honey, you know, do you need me to help you? And, and you say, no, mom, I got it. And the more that I've given you the space to grow in that, the more I see you solve problems like this. Mm -hmm. With God's grace and his wisdom. Is it hard to receive help as a leader? Definitely. Okay. It's, it, there's a feeling where yeah. you feel like you need to help everyone, but... Sometimes you need to solve it yourself yeah. instead of them helping you. Yes. So you got to work your own problems out, yeah. but never be afraid to ask others yes. for help. Yes. There's no shame in that. There's no shame in that. You have matured um, so wonderfully, and we've been on a journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've been on a journey, and it hasn't been easy. Mm -hmm. No, it hasn't been easy. And you've had to walk in a lot of different shoes <laughs> to say the least yeah. you you've had to walk in these different shoes right and um i see that the other children here uh with us um, they respect you you know they'll listen to you your brothers and your sisters they listen to you how did you develop a relationship with your siblings? And you're not the older sibling, you're not the eldest, but you're the older boy, you're the eldest 
senior boy, mm -hmm. young man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Elder senior young man. How did you develop a relationship where your, your siblings trust you and they listen to you? Well, everyone's different. Mm -hmm. I know Gianna, she's mm -hmm. free spirit. Mm -hmm. And Jacob, he has this low type. He likes playing video games. Yeah. Likes playing outside. Yeah. Gracie and Gabby are independent. Very independent. So I, I connect to them. Yes. You no, know, and I know how they're feeling because mm -hmm. I was their age too, except yeah. for Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, yes. yeah, I know what they're going through. Yeah. And it, makes a leader know mm -hmm. how they're feeling yes and when you s look at their face facial expression yes you can kind of know like how they're feeling yes and what you can do to improve it yes yes you are mm -hmm. very um gifted when it comes to handling people's emotions mm -hmm. you've had um many instances where you've had to calm people down Mm -hmm. And you've had to be calmed down yeah. in many instances. And with that experience, mm -hmm. do you find that you're able to um, attract all kind of people because you have the gift and the practice or experience of knowing how to dissolve or to prohibit or to um, hold back or help people hold back parts of their emotions so that they don't they don't spiral out of control. That's a really good question. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. um, you let them know who they are first wow. before helping them. Wow. To help them identify themselves, and then once they do, you gotta be like, "Do you know who you are?" Wow. And they'll say, "Yeah." Mm -hmm. And then you gotta connect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's just how it be. That's just how it is. You you help to identify with them. Mm -hmm. You recall to them who they are and their identity. You make a connection through experience or practice or your journey, your trial, your tribulation. You confirm them and you help them to affirm themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's a process. And for you to learn that at the age of 15, I take my hats off to you. Because that means when you're 18 and you're 25 and you're 35 and you're 40, you have mastered such a skill with balancing relationships that you're going to be so far ahead of most adults. You know that? Yeah, amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> amen to that. I think that you have a phenomenal future. I think that you have um, so many things that are coming towards you at a fast acceleration because you're so mature. With mommy um, going through certain things and even just a divorce, and this is life after divorce, mm -hmm. we talk about that on the menu. Do you see the pressure on women as single mothers? All the time. All the time. I have friends that go through the same thing. Yeah. I have, I watch yeah. a lot of documentaries and shows about it. Yeah. And you can see that they're struggling. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think that it's such a struggle for women um, when they're single and raising their children? And not to say you don't have a father, because you do, mm -hmm. um, but the responsibility has been more so on, on one parent. And for a lot of our audience, um, a lot of the responsibility is either on the mom or the dad, because mm -hmm. we don't want to leave the dads out. Why do you think it's such a weight there? Well, she explained this to me a lot, but typically there's supposed to be two roles. Yes. The father works yeah. and the mother, mm -hmm. like, you know, mm -hmm. house stuff. She's, it's a teacher, traditional, mm -hmm. yeah. The teacher. Yeah, she's a teacher, mm -hmm. she's a nurturer. Mm -hmm. She's a, um, a, a guide to what has been instructed. Mm -hmm. So we had a very traditional family. We had a very traditional family. Uh, your dad was a preacher, mm -hmm. right? And so we we um, we're a team. We are team. And when members of the team dismantle, somebody has to be the leader. Mm -hmm. With the two roles on their back. Yeah, yeah. And when you're able to do two roles as one person, how does that make you feel that you can accomplish what you need to do as a as a single person, as a as a young man growing and seeing your mother with two rolls on her back well basically 
we all share the roles now. We all need to help out. Yeah. With the taxes, with yes. the cleaning, no yeah. matter what it is. No matter what it is. Because we should all feel equal treatment. Yeah, we should all feel equal treatment. That's fantastic. So when you um, are ministering to your children or you're ministering as a family, everyone should feel that they have a place. Mm -hmm. Everyone should feel that they're important. Everyone should feel that they're responsible. Ultimately, it's going to be the father or the mother if it's a single home. Uh, one of the two that's going to make the ultimate decision. But for the most part, everybody is doing their part to contribute to the mm -hmm. totality of the vision. Yes. Have the vision for you changed now that you've experienced life after divorce with, with me and your dad? Yes. Okay, good. What What's changed in your vision? Well, a lot. Gotcha. This house. Yeah. And we have a dog now. We have a dog. Yeah, and we have a nice car. Yes. That doesn't have, you know, mm -hmm. any papers on the floor. <laughs> it's clean. <laughs> yeah, it's clean. <laughs> and just seeing everybody happy, young, and healthy. Yeah. How does that also affect your purpose in life? What do you feel as a young man, um, not what you're called to do or necessarily what job you want, but what purpose do you have in 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 your community or in your school what weight do you feel that you carry i feel like i carry like i'm responsible mm -hmm. for mostly mine but others yes responsibilities yes because for a leader mm -hmm. you need to know what somebody's thinking yes. and you need to have everybody leveled that's important. You need to know what everyone is thinking and you have to have everything level. That's very, very phenomenal to say that. When you think about what people are thinking, is that a part of communication? Of course. Okay. And it can be seen too. Wow. So knowing what people are going through is visual and is verbal. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. What do you see from that? What? Give us an example of how do you see that? Well, say if someone has aggression. Gotcha. If someone's like slamming all the stuff and mm -hmm. you can see their anger in their eyes, the best thing to do is to walk them out yeah. and let them cool off. Yes, yeah. So you're de-escalating mm -hmm. a situation, um, defusing, dissolving, yes. disarming. Fantastic. Do people trust you? All the time. Good, good, good. Why is that important? Because you need somebody's trust to know that you're loved. That's important. That is a big, big thought. Because a lot of people, even adults, even men, women, adult women, adult men, they don't understand that trust is very important and it equates to love. Mm -hmm. If you violate someone's trust, it's hard for them to love you the same. Because you always have that um, instinct or that mind uh, thought that wow this person is gonna hurt me again mm -hmm. or this person is going to uh, wound me you know it's just like putting your hands on a hot stove once you do that and you burn yourself you're very reluctant to do that again mm -hmm. when you when you've experienced people trusting you how is is that important for you to continue for them to trust you of course and yeah. the feeling yeah. of somebody trusting you you know that you have to hold that responsibility. Wow, wow. Audience, you hear it from a young man, women, men, and even relationships, you hold that responsibility. You hold the responsibility to um, show that connectivity. You hold the responsibility to show that you can be trustworthy. You hold the responsibility to show that you can be trusted. You hold the responsibility of your emotions that you don't lash out and, and cause a distrust wound. Is that true? That's powerful. That's powerful. I really appreciate you sharing that. I want to talk um, more about vision because I think that that is very important in these last days that we are experiencing so much anger and so much hate in the world and we're experiencing so many hard things and hard times. When you, when you are considering, okay, I have a vision, what are some of the steps, maybe one to two steps, that you take to cause that vision to come to pass? Sometimes denial. Okay. And you need to accept it. 
Okay. Because the sooner you accept it, the better. You okay. Will know. Absolutely. So you're saying deny the reality of what is right now. Mm -hmm. Because your vision is taking you somewhere that you're not. Mm -hmm. Okay. So part of the vision is accepting the fact that you can uh, be somewhere else rather than where you are. So you have a reality check. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yes. You deny the reality of the thing and not saying you're discombobulated or disconnected, but because your vision is, is forwarding you to a new direction, you don't accept the reality. Well, we'll never get out of this. Mm -hmm. That'll never happen. We'll never go there. Yeah. We don't have enough money. We can't do that. You deny that you, mm -hmm. you deny that. And you, you put up, you put a do not enter sign there. Right? You put a do not enter sign <laughs> there. Do not enter sign. Do not enter. And you accept the fact that I have to take a step forward. Is yeah. it hard sometimes to take a step forward out of the reality of the thing that you're experiencing? Always. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a part of growth? That is. And it'll get harder. Yeah. By the time you grow, I'm having trouble with it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. having trouble with it right now. I'm twice, yeah, three times. <laughs> Right, so I get it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then once you get over that one step, how do you feel? You feel once you know that you're gonna keep on going. Yes. Let's mm -hmm. say it's an obstacle, and you say, "Okay, I got over that obstacle." How do you feel after that? Relief. You feel, feel relief. Free. Yes. So that's that coast. Mm -hmm. That's that drive. That's that wind. That's that breeze. That's that sun. That's that music. You feel that, yes. that freedom, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're able to go a little bit higher. How is God guiding you higher? How do you feel that God guides someone higher? Um, preparation. Preparation. That's for fantastic. For objects, obstacles. Yeah. And you will encounter them. Yes. And you need to know how to solve them. You do. You do. You are, are very wise as a young man, and I think that God is breathing on you, you know. I think that there's going to be many things that you experience, but I also think that there's going to be things that God is just going to tell you. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to make a decision whether you're going to do it or not, because you have a will. Mm -hmm. But you have such great insight, meaning seen into something. Mm -hmm. When we talk to... Um, other families and we encourage them because our one of our declarations is that we you know we're a five-fold ministering family and i came from our our, our church background mm -hmm. and <clears throat> i've seen that all of our children have many gifts they have gifts to teach they have gifts to preach they have gifts of hospitality they have gifts to prophesy they have all of these wonderful gifts and, and we're responsible for helping them develop. Mm -hmm. When you talk to, to people, even adults, um, what's some of the common things that they say to you after you've helped them or after you've talked to them? Thank you. Thank you. That's important. Mm -hmm. How do you feel when they when they say that? I feel like they respect me. They respect you. I feel you. like they are I, f I feel, yes. I feel that they are really thankful and that, that touches my heart. Yes, yes. You have such a heart connection with people and um, I've watched your friends. You have uh, black friends, you know, white friends, Arab friends, mm -hmm. Chinese friends. When you were, when you were younger and we were in a different school system and uh, a little boy, you know, he called you the N word. Mm -hmm. And you came home and you told me, and I said, okay, well, we need to get to the bottom of this. Usually it's the parents or the household or something that the kids have heard mm -hmm. uh, that, that they repeat. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to the school, we had a meeting with the principal, and they told us, you know, this is unacceptable here. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate that. And we talked to the parents, and she was very apologetic. Mm -hmm. And that young man became your friend. Yeah. Do you remember that? I remember that. How did you do that? How did you get past that anger and that frustration and that hurt and, and become friends with him? I forgave and I forget. Wow. Wow. That's the key right there. To get past pain, trauma, 
disappointment you forgive and you forget how was it playing with him i don't know if you can remember that but you were young but you you can probably go back if you mm -hmm. remember how did you feel playing with him at that point playing with him with after, after yeah i felt like i was a better person and wow. he was too yeah and we were gonna be friends for a very long time yes yes when you even at that school i remember you ran for president uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> i remember that yeah. like it was yesterday yeah you ran for president and in your speech you talked about how you made a friend from a bully because not only did he call you the M or he spit on you or yeah. something just got, and I was like, yo, he threw rocks at me, he listen, spit on me. I was going to tear the <laughs> thing down because I'm like, you're not about to do this to my son. I this building will not be here anymore. Yeah. And you helped me to kind of pull back because I wanted to get an understanding, but also my heart is connected to you. So, you know, moms will just will run the mile, we'll will swim the deepest sea for our children and our mm -hmm. and our loved ones. And um, I remember he was so he was so mean. Yeah, he was so mean. But we found out that he was so hurt. Mm -hmm. He was so broken. Yeah, his household was broken. Yeah. His mom was broken. And we understand that journey, especially from where we come from to where we are. We understand how easy that can be. But in those moments, and this was probably what six, seven years ago. Yeah. In those moments, you were able to look past all of that and still love him as a person. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? It came from this. Wow. Your heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I knew that with all the stuff he's been dealing with, it's okay. Yeah. To put that aggression towards me. Yeah, that's a little wrong, but yeah. to know where he's coming from, we got to know what is yeah. causing him to be a boy yes we have to get to the root of the problem mm -hmm. are you do you like problems it depends mm -hmm. <laughs> it depends <laughs> it depends if it's easy to solve yeah if not then i can dig a little deeper into it yeah and sometimes it's okay i admit that i fail yeah and uh most of the times i fix them yeah that's how you gotta learn mm -hmm. you know do you think that's how you learn? Yeah, you learn from your mistakes. <laughs> you learn from your mistakes. And sometimes the problem um, is big for a reason. Mm -hmm. Because there's there's a big purpose behind it. And we look at the people, but it's about the purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe his mom needed a friend. And I was able to talk to her. And she was able to talk to the school. And they were able to get her the help or the resources. Yeah. And maybe that young man needed a friend and you were that person who got put on his path to be friends with him, you know? Yeah. So when there's pain and there's problems, there's purpose. Mm -hmm. Pain, problem, purpose. Remember that. This has been such a great conversation. I, I want to keep talking to you and I want to um, continue to share um, a lot of the things that you've experienced. I know that we are at 30 minutes right here, right now. Um, what do you, what do you feel your next thing is? My next thing, my next thing might be getting ready for adult life. Getting ready, ready to drive, yeah. businesses. Yes. And that's gonna be a lot of problems, but yes. I'll be able to get through them. You're gonna get through them. You're gonna get through them with flying colors. Mm -hmm. I want to introduce you to Mr. Justin Smith, the educated, the well-rounded, the balanced, the problem solver, the intellect, the guide, the heart, the go-to. Um, he's a phenomenal young man and I'm, I'm happy to present him to you, to the world, from us to you. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in. We appreciate you sharing vision with us when we do get on that coast or in that Caribbean and we are uh, fishing out of the ocean and we driving on scooters and we live in our best life. We're going to continue to tap in with you because it's been a process getting there. 
So we want to say happy Mother's Day. Have a beautiful weekend. We love you and we appreciate you. Remember to subscribe. Please like and subscribe and share. Tell your friends. We have great content coming up and we want to continue to push and we want to continue to bring light and information and love to our audience. Do you want to say anything? Uh, hopefully there'll be a part two. Yes. And we'll be talking more deeper. Yes. And I can't wait. Thank can't you wait. for inviting me. Thank you anytime. You're always welcome. So we meet again, you two. We love you. We appreciate you. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.